Probably one of the rare few phones that can strike a balance between hardcore gaming and good camera photography. Introducing the Vivo V30 Pro, this one has a Dimensity 8200 to give you a good gaming experience. It has a Zeiss optic lens on all of its camera including the front one to give you a good camera experience. It has fast charging, curved AMOLED display, and best of all, you can buy a flagship level price para you get flagship like level na experience. More details after this quick intro. Now guys, a Vivo V30 Pro that has 12 gigs of RAM and a 512 gigs of storage will be priced at 34,999, which I'll be posting on the description box below. Kung sadyo siya pwede mabili officially. Now let's get down to the design. I really love the back case nito Vivo V30 Pro. This one is being glass protected, and ang kanang harap is being protected by the shot alpha glass. It sports the aluminum side frames, which gives you extra strength. And what's nice dito sa kanang white barrier is that medyo may pagka pearly ang kanang itsura, which looks good pag naiilawan. E nakita natin dito na pinalaki nila ang kanilang aura ride to give you a better experience when you're taking those Or you can even use it for vlogging. Nakita natin ang kanang Zeiss logo is over here, medyo maliit lang. And impressively thin din ang kanang camera bump. It also sports a curved AMOLED display, which is my favorite. Now, the phone na ito is being powered by the MediaTek Dimensity 8200 which we know that can give you a really really good experience even on gaming. And on benchmarking, you will 917,000 points which is quite near to 1 million points. And if you break it down, these are the scores that you can see. So Wide Life Extreme, we got a loop score of 1,800 and a 62% stability. These are the benchmarks that you can see from Geekbench or CPU benchmarking and GPU benchmarking. Looking all good naman for the first 12 minutes dito sa kanyang thermal throttling nest, medyo nag-drop siya towards the 13 minute mark and it throttled to 73% ang kanyang best performance. Now, itong phone nito has a 6.78 inch na curved AMOLED display with a 120Hz of screen refresh rate. Ang kanyang maximum brightness dito sa phone nito is 2,800 nits and meron siyang screen to body ratio na 90%. Almost bezel-less kasi infinity display ang kanyang gilid plus very thin ang kanyang bezels dito sa ibabaw at sa ilalim. Ito phone na ito has a level 1 na Wi-Fi security level so meaning you can watch all of your favorite HD dito sa phone na ito and if you're scrolling through social media like what I do be it on shorts, on reels, mafe-feel mo dalagang smooth na smooth na yung experience dito dahil ka na 120Hz of screen refresh rate and if you're watching your favorite shows dito sa phone na ito expect really nice and vibrant colors dito dahil pwede mo pa i-turn on ang kind of visual enhancement dito to give you that better experience so if you're watching videos on YouTube expect it to be better, brighter, and more sharper na video na surprising nito phone na ito, wala siyang dual speaker Tinay ko pakinggan, tinakpal ko ilalim at pinapakinggan ko all over the phone na ito. And there's no sound coming off dito sa kanyang uh, earpiece. So wala rin siyang butas dito sa kanyang ibabaw. So meaning this one only has one loud firing speaker. It's up to 150% na kanyang maximum volume which is quite okay. Not the loudest but okay. Now, pagdating na sa gaming, I did play 3 games dito sa phone na ito. I did try Farlight 84, Call of Duty Mobile, and Genshin Impact. Call of Duty Mobile, mga expect mo talaga yun. You'd really get a good gaming experience dito sa phone na ito. And you play mga rank matches, mga battle royals dito. Expect it to be really smooth. Wala ako halos na feel na frame lapse dito sa game na ito. And the screen is really responsive. Now, pagdating na sa Farlight 84 setting to all high settings, I was able to game with ease. Dahil ang Dimensity 8200 was able to push itong game na ito to its limit. And after playing for 2 hours, 
course, halos wala ako na-feel na frame drops dito sa game na ito. It's, it was really smooth. Kahit magbakbakan kayo on a certain point, okay na okay pa rin siya. And after 2 hours of gaming, ito phone na ito, heated up to 46 degrees Celsius. Based sa aking mahal sila thermal scanner. Pagdating dito naman sa Genshin Impact, to my surprise, yung kanyang graphical settings, outright, medyo magandang kanyang graphical settings. And, and as usual, sinagad ko naman siya sa maximum graphical settings sa kaya dito was good. Even though na there's a few minor frame drops along the way, hindi mo naman expect na halos zero, no? And sasabihin ko sa inyo, no? Pag medyo nagbabakbakal kayo, mafe-feel mo there's a minor frame drop sa mangyayari. For me, it's not too much of a big deal dahil I was able to play this for one hour. Wala mo naging masyadong problema. Ang kind of pinaka-hottest temperature na na-achieve dito is around 48 degrees Celsius. Now, the phone na ito delivers together with a Funtouch OS 14 inside Android version 14. Ang kind of 12 gigs of RAM, pwede mo extend another 12 to give you a 24 gigs of storage to give you a 24 gigs of memory. And this one is a LPDDR5X. And again, a 256 gig of storage is UFS 3.1. Now, right now, we're diving into the best part dito sa show na ito, which is ang kinang camera. It has triple na 50 MP na camera sensor, which is probably rare sa mga phone at this price point, which has a flagship level like the experience under Zeiss Optics. And we're talking about the 50 MP na main camera sensor na Sony IMX920 with OIS and the other the telephoto lens with 2 times optical zoom. And we also have a 50 MP na ultra wide lens with a 119 degrees na wide angle view. And again, a rear camera can shoot you up to 4K and 60. And again, a front facing camera is another 50 MP na main camera sensor powered by Zeiss Optics. And it can also shoot you up to 4K and 30. So, simulan natin with our camera analysis with some outdoor shot. You'd see itong shot na ito. Ting mo dito, the shot is very natural. And you'd see all of the details dito sa kanang bato. And probably one of the things na napapansin ko dito sa kanang camera na hindi ko napapansin sa ibang camera is yung mga details niya dito, yung mga deep details niya which was captured dito sa camera ni Vivo V30 Pro. And I'm quite amazed with this shot and ang ganda na pagka-reproduce dito sa shot na ito. Like, see all of the details dito sa kanyang petal. Yung pati yung kanyang pollen dito sa gitna is very preserved ang kanyang details. And I love the natural orange dito sa kanyang petal as well. Now, if you're looking at this shot, I would say na yung kanyang green is not the saturated green though a little bit enhanced. O eh, na mga ibang shots na nakikita ko sa ibang camera. Now, we're taking a look at some shots like this, very dramatic. You can see kahit mga dahon lang to, no, mato yung dahon sa sahig. And pag zoom in mo dito sa kanyang gitna, you'd see a lot of details dito na na-preserve dito sa shot na ito. Now, if you're going outdoor, this is a ultra-wide shot. This is a normal shot. A two-time zoom shot. And this is a four-time zoom shot. We're going for four-time zoom, you'd see yung mga details niya sa cloud and dito sa mga salamin sa building are very much preserved pa rin. Probably the only thing na napansin ko yung difference between the color is yung sa ultra-wide shot at sa kanyang normal shot. Yung blue dito sa ultra-wide, medyo mas lighter blue as compared sa a little bit darker blue dito. But quite consistent naman siya from one times, two times, and four times zoom. Very consistent ang kanyang colors. Now, playing with the zoom lens again, this is a ultra-wide shot, a normal shot, two times zoom shot, and four times zoom shot. Up. You see all of the details dito na naka-engraved dito sa Monument sa Scout Circle, it's still very readable. Hindi lang siya readable, but still sharp. And one of the good things na gusto ko dito sa camera is ang ganda ng pagkakuha niya sa mga outdoor shot, especially sa clouds at sa mga sky, ang ganda ng pagka-render. If you're the type of person na mahilig sa mga bokeh shot, I would say na itong kinang camera is ang ganda ng kanang pagka-bokeh, pagka-render ng mga bokeh shot. You see yung ganda ng separation between the subject and the background dito. Kitang-kita mo, no? Very pop out ang kanang subject, plus ang ganda ng kanang pagka-creamy bokeh blur dito sa likod. If you're taking some shot like mga coffee bean shot, you'll see a lot of details that are preserved dito sa mga beans once you zoom in in. Now, if you're playing with the zoom lens dito sa indoor, this is a ultra-wide shot sample. This is a normal shot, a two-time zoom shot, and a four-time zoom shot. Now, you see the sharpness and the preserved dito sa photo nito is still very good. Now, on indoor, I did play a little bit with the aura light. This is a light, and this is a shot na may aura light. Ang ganda no, medyo mas pop out ang yung subject once you use the aura light. I would say itong kanyang camera is perfect for food photography. You'd see some of this carving ng turkey, some of these desserts, some of these ice cream shots are definitely nice. If you're taking very colorful food shot like this one, I would say pop out na pop out ang kanyang subject. Ang litaw no, ang ganda ng kanyang pagka-render dito sa photo na ito. And taking some shot under the yellow halogen bulb, 
ganda pa rin, no? Hindi siya naninilaw unlike the Reno 11. And further showing some full shot, I would say okay na okay siya sa mga salmon sashimi and sa mga tuna sashimi. So si Vivo V30 Pro is also claiming itself as the portrait master. I would say that this is probably one of the better portrait master as compared to the other portrait masters out there. And taking in this shot, I would say ang ganda ng ganyang pagkalitaw ng subject, no? Very nice and plus ang ganyang pagka background blur dito is really really good. And taking another good portrait shot, I would say ang ganda talaga ng ganyang camera. Nice. Ang ganda ng pagka-focus talaga sa kanyang subject. Plus bonus na rin pogi kasi ang subject. And trying some low light shot, I would say ang ganda rin kanyang pagka-focus dito sa kanyang light bulb. It was really nice, no? And trying the night mode on the Vivo V30 Pro. Ang ganda rin kanyang pagkakuha dito sa photo na ito on outdoors. And so taking in this night shot dito sa building na ito, pag zoom in mo, okay pa rin siya, no? Hindi siya masyadong grainy. Now, I'm pretty sure ang dami ko pang photo sa gusto i-share sa inyo. But of course, due to the limited airspace dito sa aking channel, you'll see me upload it sa aking Facebook page. Do follow me at Gadget Psychic sa Facebook for more of these photos. Now, trying the front-facing camera na may Zeiss Optics din, I would say ang ganda ng kanyang pagka kuha dito sa shot na ito. No? Even though na medyo a little bit enhanced ang aking mukha, medyo na wala akong mga blemishes, but still, nandiyan ba rin mga wrinkles and some of the pores sa aking mukha. No, na wala akong ding mga tigyawat, but it still looks very natural. Another outdoor shot which looks kinda semi-natural, na wala lang yung tigyawat, but, but overall, nandiyan pa rin mga wrinkles. Indoor shot looks really nice and yeah, ang ganda ng ganang camera talaga. This is a low light indoor shot. This one is also good using the portrait mode. And another low light indoor shot. Uh, shooting a 4K video using the front facing camera, I would say ang ganda. The resolution is nice. Though a little bit shaky, hindi naman siya super stable. But if you have the luxury of a gimbal, please do try to use it. And using the rear camera shooting 4K, okay siya daw. Ang ganda ng ganang video quality, I'd say it's probably one of the better ones at this price point. Probably one of the problem dito sa kanang camera sa rear is it's shaky. But if you reduce it to 1080 and 60, stable siya. But if you use a 4K and 60, medyo shaky siya. Now, suggest ko is to get a gimbal para mas stable ang yung video using the rear camera. Now guys, ano ba sasabi ko dito sa Vivo V30 Pro? It's probably one of those phones that strikes a balance between hardcore gaming and really good photography. Dahil this phone, Dimensity 8200, ang ganda ng kanilang gaming experience. And ang kanilang camera, I would say, it gives you a flagship level-like experience na hindi mo kailangan mabuy ng flagship level na price. And with a 5,000mAh sa battery, supporting up to 80 watts of fast charging, it can last you the whole day. I was even able to get a 14 hours and 14 minutes na screen on time. Overall, the experience is really nice. I don't see any reason kung bakit hindi dapat i-consider itong phone na ito as your next daily driver. If you want to know kung saan na pwede mabili ang Vivo V30 Pro, I'll be linking all of the official link on the description box below. And if you like this video, don't forget to like and of course, share this to your friends. And a subscription to this channel will definitely be helpful. I'll see you in the next one. And so, I'm Parasir Richmond and you're watching Gadget Psychic. What's up? Like and subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. For one of my latest uploads, click the dito. And for one of my popular uploads, click here.